Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another lecture about wellness. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about estrogen and a little bit about bioidentical hormone replacement. But really, we're going to start our discussion about estrogen itself. Now, what's estrogen? Estrogen is a, is a pretty potent hormone that's primarily produced by the ovaries. Men and women both make uh, estrogen, but women make far more estrogen than, than uh, men do. Um, and so when we lose that ability to produce estrogen, we enter into what's called menopause. And, and menopause generally, on average, occurs at about age 51 for females. A good, good yardstick a lot of times is what age your mother went through menopause because that's usually you know, pretty close to when you might go through menopause. Um, and so that loss of estrogen can be a problem. And we know that estrogen does a number of really important things. For one thing, it protects the heart against cardiovascular disease. It protects the brain against strokes, as well as Alzheimer's and other types of dementia. It, it protects the bones against osteoporosis or, or bone thinning. Um, it improves static balance. It prevents sort of hot flashes that, that you hear about women getting when they do enter menopause. Um, it has a number of neurologic and cardiovascular benefits. It tends to relax smooth muscle, which lowers blood pressure. And then it, what happens when we reach menopause, and, and generally the, the medical definition of menopause is typically no period for a year. And LH, or luteinizing hormone above 10, and or an FSH above 25, follicle stimulating hormone. Now, obviously you, you may have a uh, hysterectomy with the ovaries removal, that's a surgical menopause, and some other people have other reasons that cause menopause, but that's the classic definition. And you know, when we lose estrogen, what are the side effects of estrogen deficiency? Well, one of those things is urogenital atrophy, so vaginal dryness and, and pain with intercourse, incontinence uh, starts happening. Um, sagging skin, sagging breasts, facial wrinkles all are related in part to losing estrogen. Um, fatigue is another one. Uh, depression, mood swings, loss of libido, um, you know, a lot of times forgetfulness, memory problems, all of those things are related to um, really the loss of, there are multiple types of estrogen, but estradiol or E2 is really the one that we think provides most of the benefit. Um, and so that's the one we're gonna kind of be focusing on. Um, you know, one of the things that we sometimes hear about is, is this thing I call bioidentical hormone replacement. Well, what does that really mean? Well, what that means is if we wanna get hormone levels back to where they, they, they should be, we, we probably wanna use the same stuff that your body produces. So a bioidentical hormone is exactly the same molecular structure as what your body produces naturally. Now. That's obviously the way we wanna replace hormones if we can. But if you're a drug company, guess what? You cannot patent a bio, you can't patent a natural hormone. It's, it's natural, it can't be patented. But you can patent a synthetic version of that. And so there's a number of synthetic estrogens that have been developed that uh, you know, are sold by pharma, uh, pharmaceutical companies. And you, you take a synthetic estrogen and then it goes through a number of, of steps in the liver or whatever and it gets metabolized to estradiol which is what we ultimately want. The problem is that you can have several side effects with that. And we, we know that a lot of the, um, the problems that we've seen with hormone replacement, things like cardiovascular disease and, and clots and, and cancer risk is really related to synthetic hormone, you know, synthetic estrogens or progestin use. They really have not been demonstrated when estradiol is used or progesterone is used. As a matter of fact, progesterone has been shown in multiple studies to be kind of a cancer preventer or a moderator, whereas progestin has been shown to be exactly the opposite. So when we talk about estrogen loss, then we really wanna kind of think about replacing back to physiologic levels. Now, there's a lot of, of benefits from estrogen. It, it improves your HDL cholesterol, it lowers your LDL cholesterol, it helps you uh, deal with free radicals, which can cause lots of, of problems um, in terms of cancer risk, but we've got to be smart about it. And so, you know, you need to have an assessment done. Someone has to look at your levels and, and find out, you know, are you meet, do you meet the criteria? 
It turns out though, there are some risks with even bioidentical hormone replacement if you have some underlying medical problems. And one of the things that was interesting was the Women's Health Initiative, which is was this big study that initially came out and said that um, hormone replacement caused you know, increased cardiovascular disease and death. And it turns out after that, those initial results came back and people went back and reanalyzed the data, what they actually found was this, that if women were above 60 years old and they had underlying medical problems like diabetes, smoking, hypertension, or known cardiovascular disease, their risk of having a heart attack or stroke went mar up markedly when you added estrogen into the mix. However, if you separate out that group and you just look at the people that don't have any of those risks, their risk went down markedly. And it turns out there's an enzyme called matrix metalloprotease that um, estrogen kind of upregulates and makes it more active. And that enzyme, if it gets more active, if you've got existing plaque in a vessel, so if you've got heart disease, it can cause that plaque to rupture. A ruptured plaque triggers a clot. And if it's in a blood vessel in the heart, it's a heart attack. In the brain, it's a stroke. So it turns out if you've got cardiovascular disease, oral estrogen is really not good for you. But if you don't have it, it's very protective. Um, and so we have to really do a very careful evaluation of people when we talk about hormone replacement. We've got to risk stratify them. We've got to find out what the, the needs of the patient are, what they're trying to get out of it to decide whether it's the right and prudent course. Now, the good news is that while oral estrogen really does protect the heart, it protects the brain, protects the bone, you can get a lot of symptom relief with transdermal estrogen, so estrogen creams or patches, and that transdermal does not increase cardiovascular risk at all. So we can get symptom improvement, although maybe not the great health improvements we get with oral estrogen. Again, you need to go see somebody who kind of knows what they're doing and can give you the right guidance, do the right lab work, and give you the right pathway forward. We want our patients to feel better, to perform better, and really to feel as good at 60, 70, and 80 that they did at 30, 40, and 50, if not better. Um, I'm gonna kind of cut things off there. This is estrogen in a very small nutshell. Next week, I'm gonna talk about progesterone, and I'm gonna talk about some of the strategies for replacing those hormones. And then subsequently, we're gonna, we're gonna be doing a few other hormonal topics, including thyroid, testosterone. We'll probably talk a little bit about growth hormone and maybe some of the other sort of sub-hormones, things like vitamin D and DHEA and a few others. Uh, stay tuned, I will try to get these out a little bit more regularly. I apologize, I've been a little um, a little busy and distracted the last couple of weeks, but I'm back on, on, on track here. So please, if you like this, please follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the little bell so you'll get a notification when I post. This is Dr. Galvin, everybody have a great day, we'll talk to you soon.